Uh, the big news today, obviously, Coach, is Keegan Murray starting. How much do you expect or at least hope for him to impact the offensive starts for this team? Well, we think he's going to be a great player in this league for a long time. So uh, getting him comfortable in that role, getting him to move into the starting lineup, uh, something we couldn't do because of the health and safety protocols for game one. Uh, but, you know, this kid, he's got a lot of talent. He's got the ability to shoot from the outside. He gives us a little bit more length. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it's just it's a normal thing to do for us. Um, you know, you, you start your best players. This kid's going to be a starter for the for most of his career. So, Let's get him in that spot. Let's get him feeling comfortable with it. One thing I don't expect when Keegan Murray gets his first start is being, is it be, the moment being too big for him? Can it be overstated how mature and ready for everything this kid seems to be? No, he's got like ice water right now. He's just, he's just so calm and cool about everything. He, uh, he's a uh, nonchalant almost to a, to a fault sometimes, but uh, you know, he's just like, just easy going. He understands what we're trying to do. He's picked things up well. Um, all that aside, he's got this little bit of a competitive streak within him, and uh, but he just doesn't ever seem to get phased by any moment so far, which is which is really fun to watch. It's fun to see him go through that because uh, he's just got a great, such a great attitude. Kings assistant Jay Triano is with us on the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. Coach, how would you define De'Aaron Fox's start? Uh, especially on the offensive side for you guys, electric. I mean, <laughs> I think he's just been—he's uh, been so tough to guard. He's been able to get to wherever he wants to go. Um, I think our spacing has afforded him uh, the room to do things. Uh, when teams start to adjust and try to take away things, he'll be more of a distributor. But right now, he's unstoppable. I mean, he—he he can get to wherever he wants to go and. Uh, he's making shots, which has been great for us offensively. Uh, it's, it's fun to see because he's put a lot of time and a lot of work into it, and he's in a and he's in a great place, which is which is huge for us. And he's shown flashes of what he can be defensively. And Mike Brown has said when when he can do that consistently is when this team will take it to another level. How close do you think he is to to finding that consistent level of defensive play? Well, he's got to be he's got to be close, and if he's not close, Coach Brown's going to make sure that he's close because <laughs> we stop practices and we stop things. And he, you've seen him in games; he takes quick timeouts. He's going to let everybody know if they've missed uh, an assignment or they're not uh, they're not doing things up to the standard that that Coach Brown wants. So, um, you know, I think I think that's the that's the big thing for us, and one of the things that's going to be great is that, uh, you know, everybody's being held accountable uh, from top to bottom uh, with what they do at the defensive end and the effort and, and the competitive style that we want to play. If you don't run back, we're going to stop things. If you, if you, if you miss an assignment, we're going to stop things. And uh, I think that's going to be – that's going to pay dividends, especially down the road for us. Kings assistant coach Jay Triano with us here on Cattles and Rami, Sacktown Sports. What what ways do you think you guys can try and get Harrison Barnes more involved and get him going a little bit here? I think the more he becomes familiar with what we're trying to do, uh, you know, we're playing a lot of concept show basketball where we're not really uh, running a lot of plays. Um, and I think he's, he's, he started to feel it a little bit. Um, I think once he gets a, a good handle on it and, and you know what, there's, there's things we can do offensively to put him in the right spots. Uh, uh, we, we've worked on some of those earlier this week, but uh, you know he's been a pro for so long. He's such a great athlete, a great player. Uh, he's he's not going to have a hard time fitting into this. It's just it's you know it's maybe taking a little bit longer just because of uh, you know the newness of everything that we're trying to do offensively. Another guy on this team, and and on the opposite end of of, of Harrison Barnes right now has been Kevin Herter. And I was telling Nick yesterday. I've been surprised by not just how good he is, how well-rounded his game is. Have you guys been at all surprised by everything Kevin Herter brings to the table? Not really. Um, you know, I, I, I obviously was in the Eastern Conference last year uh, with Charlotte, and we played against Atlanta, and he was he was near the top of our – you know, obviously you're going to, you know, have to think about Trey Young on that team, but – he was at the top of our list of the, you know, how to get this team to not function uh, offensively. Uh, what can you do to disrupt them? And Kevin Herter is, is he's a playmaker. He's a rebounder. He can push in transition. He had a little bit of everything. He has some length at the, at the defensive end. So 
he was always a guy that we looked at as, uh, you know, he's got more than one thing. He's, he, yes, he can shoot the ball, but he's got a little bit more to his game than, than people give him credit for. And I think it was even in the offseason we were looking at, uh, you know, possible trades to make. And, uh, he, you know, we weren't even looking at him, but he kept showing up on the screen. He kept showing up on the screen. We said, this is a kid. Man, this is exactly what we're looking for. And uh, sure enough, uh, you know, things, things uh, unfold the right way, and we, he ends up on the roster here. Kings assistant coach Jay Triano with us. He's on the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. Coach, you finally got Domas going a little bit on Sunday night. Ultimately, when you envision this offense, what's the perfect role that you want to see Domas playing for you guys? Probably 50-50 distributor score finisher um, where he's – you know, you know, making plays for other people because he's going to have the ball in his hands a lot. Uh, I think everybody in this league, you know, gears up to play pick and roll. And, you know, with, with, with the flip to him and the, and the DHOs and the quick flip backs and the quick screens, it's tough to, to scheme against us. Uh, so I think the mixture of, you know, how he can distribute to his teammates and then uh, once he starts doing that, the floor is going to open up for him. And I think we saw a little bit of that against Golden State where – he's able to finish at the basket and, and have a little bit more space than uh, everybody just crowding around him at the basket. To bring things full circle, how much do you think Keegan Murray being out there in the starting lineup and, and maybe a few more minutes opens things up for Domas and De'Aaron Fox? No, definitely. I mean, I think the one thing that, you know, Keegan's show already is how, you know, his proficiency in being able to shoot the basketball. So uh, him being on the floor, uh, he's just going to be another floor spacer. I mean, we've got, you know, now you've got Harrison out there who can slash and get to the rim. You've got Foxy um, playing off of Domus and then, and, and Herter spreading the floor as well. So it just, it just creates another guy who can spread the floor and create more space for everybody else. And if you, if you happen to help in and help on those guys, then he's going to be able to knock down shots. So, uh, you know, Keegan's a, he's a, he's a huge plus for us offensively. And uh, we're excited to have him in that starting lineup. Coach Jay Triano with us. Just a few more for you, Coach. And, again, we appreciate your time. You, you guys are sixth in the NBA in assist ratio. Have you been pleased with the ball and man movement so far? I have. Uh, I think I think we can have more. Uh, you know, and I say that, you know, you know being sixth is okay. But, I, 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 you know, we're watching film and we're seeing more opportunities where we could make that extra pass. And uh, I think the more that we can make that extra pass and, and, and keep climbing the ladder – in the NBA, it's going to be, uh, it's important to the morale of everybody. If everybody's touching the ball, everybody's going to be more engaged at the defensive end and uh, everybody feels part of the sharing it. And uh, I'll tell you what, you know, ISO basketball and playing selfish is contagious, but so is distributing the ball. And I think if we can, you know, keep trending towards we're a team that's going to share it, it's going to, it's going to help all of us in the long run because, uh, you know, the catch and shoot shot is the, is the highest thing that we can do. And if we're passing the ball, we're, we're, we're creating more of those opportunities. There have been times throughout the preseason in these first three games of the regular season where we're a little bit confused by some of the rotations, which we should be. We're not in practice in the meetings. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But how yeah. close do you think Coach Brown is to figuring out exactly what the rotations are, who comes off the bench when and who fits together? Well, I think we're all still trying to figure each other out. I sure. mean, I, I think, you know, coaches, uh, you know, the first time with this group and first time in real games and the guys are playing extended minutes, you know, preseason was just everybody's going to play a little bit. Now guys are playing. How does a guy respond to playing 11 minutes a game rather than 24 uh, like he was in preseason? Uh, we're all trying to figure everybody out. But I think Coach Brown has a pretty good feel for who he wants on the floor at different times. But this is always going to be a work in progress. And I think one of the strengths that we have this year is, is the depth that this team has. And if somebody's not doing it right or not doing it well, well, we can go to the next guy. And I, I and there's a next man up mentality. And I think the, the caliber of this team and the way it's been put together has afforded us that opportunity as coaches. Last one for you, coach, today. Defensively, you guys are hovering towards the bottom third of the league in, in rating. Yeah. What's the top priority to address on that end, and what's been the top priority the last few days of practice? I think the biggest thing, especially uh, coming in against Memphis, is, is defensive transition. Uh, I think when we can get back and get our defense set, we're going to be really good. Uh, I think the, you know getting back against John Morant tomorrow night is going to be huge, one of the fastest players in the league. 
building that wall and establishing where we are in the, as a half court defensive team. Uh, that's the key to, you know, every, most of the good teams defensively in the NBA is how well you can get back in transition and get your half court defense set.